Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, we'll be talking about linear differential equations. So let's talk about what a linear equation actually is. So a linear differential equation is essentially any equation that looks like this. So dy over dt plus p of t times y equals g of t. Now, just to note, this could be this could be a p of x and d of x, a dx and d of x. Those are that's fine. I just pick t as my variable, but it doesn't really matter what variable you pick. So, a linear equation is any differential equation that looks of that looks like this. So, it's out of falling form. So, this is known as standard form generally. So, in order to solve a linear equation, it has to look like this. If it's not, if it, if the equation doesn't look like this, you cannot solve it. So oftentimes a differential equation will have to be manipulated until it kind of actually looks like this. So how do you actually solve this? So to actually solve this, you need something called an integration factor. So to solve, we need an integration factor. So what is an integration factor? An integration factor is essentially uh, a function, or I shouldn't say a function, but like a factor of some kind that facilitates the solving of a differential equation. It makes the, it, it just makes the differential equation nicer to work with, essentially. So I'm going to call this integration factor mu of t. Okay, so essentially what I'm just saying is that we're going to use mu of t to make this differential equation look nicer, essentially, so it's nicer to solve. Okay. Now, let's talk about how to actually solve this equation. Now, the first step. So first, I'm going to assume that mu of t satisfies the following. Okay, so in order to, so now I'm going to assume that mu of t satisfies this. So let me just go ahead and underline that. So I'm going to assume that mu of t times p of t is equal to mu prime of t. Now, this might seem a bit absurd at first, but let's just kind of we'll, we'll roll with it. Now, here's the thing. In mathematics, you're always allowed to assume something. It's just that at the very end, you have to be able to eventually justify your assumption with some kind of other proof technique. And if you can justify your initial assumption, you could use your assumption in for the rest of the proof. That's perfectly okay. You're always allowed to assume something. Remember, in Calculus 1, we were allowed to assume the induction hypothesis holds true. And we used that assumption along with the induction step and the base case to prove our statement. So it's the same idea here. I'm allowed to assume that this is true. It's just that I'm going to have to justify this with some other technique. And then using that, I'll have proved my solution. So let's keep going. Okay. So now, let me just erase that tiny dot. Okay, so now let's look at our original equation. So our original equation, remember, was dy over dt plus p of t times y equals g of t. So the next step is that I'm going to multiply both sides. So multiply both sides by mu of t. Okay, so if I do that, I'll get mu of t times dy by dt equals mu of, oh, it's not, not equals, plus mu of t, p of t, y equals mu of t times g of t. Now, just to be very clear, this is going to be a video about derivation. In the next video is when I'll be actually doing examples. So that aside, now let's take a look here. We know that mu of t times p of t is mu prime of t. So we can go ahead and kind of replace this part with mu prime of t. So remember, we assumed this to be true. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is to give us mu prime of t y equals mu of t times g of t. Okay, so now let's take a very good look here. This is essentially the definition of the product rule. Why is that? Well, 
we can kind of rewrite this as mu of t, y of t, prime equals mu of t, g of t. Okay, now well, you, you might be wondering why is this true? Well, let's go ahead and expand this. So if we can go ahead and expand this, we'll get, so let this be u and let this be v. So we get u v prime, so mu of t times y prime of t, or dy by dt. So u v prime plus v times u prime, so u prime of t. But that's exactly what we have here, so that's the same thing. y of t is the same thing as just y. And we can always switch around the order of the operations, so that's the same thing. So that's what we have here. So instead of just rewriting it using this long format, we can just rewrite this with the definition of the product rule instead. Why is this important? Well, now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be integrating both sides. Both, these are, or both of these sides are done with respect to t. So we get the integral of mu of t y prime uh, y of t all primed dt equals the integral of mu of t times g of t dt. Okay, but according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, the integral and derivative operators are pretty much the opposites of each other. So the integral of a derivative is just going to simply cancel out. So this means we get mu of t, y of t, plus some constant is equal to the integral of mu of t, g of t, uh, g of t, dt. Okay, so now we just have to solve for y of t. So if you go ahead and solve for y of t, this means that y of t, or the solution to the differential equation, is going to be equal to the integral of mu of t, g of t. So let me just fix that a little bit. Uh, dt. minus c, because we have to move this to the other side. And then we divide all of this by mu of t. So this is our solution to the ODE. Now, I, I strongly recommend you do not memorize this and actually remember the process of how I actually did this. Now, we still have to figure out how to actually find mu of t. So let's go ahead and talk about this for a second. But all in all, this is the solution to the actual differential equation. We just have to figure out how to actually find what mu of t is. Okay, so we know that mu of t times p of t is equal to mu prime of t. That means by definition, p of t is equal to mu prime of t divided by mu of t. Remember, we assume this to be true. Okay, so now remember from calculus one that the derivative with respect to t of ln of mu of t, according to our chain rule, is equal to one over mu of t times mu prime of t. Or in other words, we get mu prime of t divided by mu of t. Okay. So this means that instead of writing it like this, we can rewrite this in terms of a derivative operator. So that means p of t is equal to the derivative of ln of mu of t prime. Okay, this is really good because now that means we can integrate both sides. So the integral of p of t is equal to, or dt rather, is equal to the integral of ln of mu of t prime dt. But once again, because of the fundamental theorem of calculus, the, the, the integral and derivative operators are just going to cancel out. So that means we get that if I just move this, if I just move things over to the other side and just kind of rewrite this a little bit, this means that ln of mu of t by definition, is equal to the integral of p of t times dt, and this time I'm gonna uh, and because I integrated this side and got plus c, I'm gonna 
uh, okay, so the integral of this part is just going to cancel out, and then, I'm, and then I'm going to have an arbitrary constant. I'm going to call that constant k. So essentially what I'm going to get, uh, okay, let's not, let's not skip steps for a second. So here I'm going to get the integral of p of t times dt. The integral of this one is going to be ln of mu of t, because the derivative of integral operators cancel, plus a constant, which I'm going to call k. So ln of mu of t is equal to the integral of p of t dt minus k. Okay, so this right there is the situation that's going on right now. And the reason I use k is because I use c already. So just to be to say, just for the sake of consistency, we should be using different variables. So I just use I just use k. Okay, now solving for mu of t, this is going to give me mu of t is equal to e to the integral of p of t dt minus k. Okay, but this can be split apart a little bit. So we can rewrite this as e to the minus k, e to the integral of p of t times dt. Okay, but this is a constant. So I'm going to just let this thing be equal to k. So capital K to be specific. So capital K, e to the integral of p of t times dt. So that's going to be my mu of t. Okay, so at this point, we can go ahead and substitute this into the y of t. So remember, my y of t was right here. So let's go ahead and copy paste that down so we can get a sense of what's going on. So there we go. Okay, let me just go ahead and move things around a little bit. Okay, so now we know what mu of t is. So now that's, this means that, let me just move this around. So this means y of t is equal to the integral of k e to the integral of p of t times dt, g of t, dt minus c all over k e to the integral of p of t times dt. But here's the thing. We can take the k's out because that's a constant, so the k's is cancel. So that means y of t is equal to the integral of e to the integral of p of t times dt times g of t times dt minus c. And then we're going to divide this by e to the integral of p of t times dt. But just to be very clear, let's take a look what's going on. Originally, the solution to this differential equation was given by the following. So that's right there. Let me just go ahead and copy paste that over. Let me just move this over a little bit. Just Okay, so there we go. So if I kind of like compare these two things together, so if I kind of compare them, they're the exact same thing. So if I compare term by term, we can see by inspection that mu of t is equal to this. So that means by definition, mu of t, so my integration factor, so this is my integration factor if you remember. Okay. So this, by definition, is equal to e to the integral of p of t times dt. And that is how I calculate mu of t. So this is how to calculate the integration factor. So this might seem like a lot of work, and uh, you might not be sure like what's going on. 
So in the next video, I will be doing examples, but let me just write down a quick summary of what to actually do to solve this equation. So procedure to solve. So let me just go ahead and uh, write this all down. Uh, okay. So in order to solve this equation, let's go ahead and do this. Okay, so step one, make sure your equation is out of falling form. So make sure, sure that the ODE looks like this. So it has to look like the following. So it simply has to look like dy over dt plus p of t y equals g of t. So it, it it's it's got to look like this. If it doesn't look like this, you need to manipulate it until it does. Okay, so the next one is you need to find the integration factor. So find t integration factor. mu of t. And as we just found, mu of t, by definition, is equal to e to the integral of p of t times dt. So this is the definition of an integral factor. We just determined that. Okay, so step three, multiply both sides by mu of t okay so multiply both sides by mu of t that's simple enough and then if you did it correctly the left hand side sh lo should look like the product rule so left hand side should look like product rule And if it doesn't, you probably did something wrong. Because this will always happen. Because if you remember in our derivation earlier, right here, we we were able to manipulate this side so that it looked like the product rule. So this will always happen. So if it doesn't happen, you're in trouble. Okay, so step four, integrate both sides. And of course, the left-hand side will cancel because you can rewrite it as a derivative, more or less. So integrate both sides. And the last one, if possible, because this one obviously be possible. So if possible, solve for y. And that's it. That's our entire procedure on how to solve a linear differential equation. In the next video, I'll be doing a bunch of examples covering this technique and hopefully after that you'll have more or less figured out how to solve these types of problems. Okay, I will see you then.